All right, guys, welcome back to Wild Outdoor Living. So today we're talking about the MicroShift Advent 1x9 drivetrain. I have been running this on my Surly Krampus here for the past about 300 miles or so, basically since June. Um, haven't done as much riding this year as I normally do, but I have installed this drivetrain on a number of other bikes, so I've gotten some some experience installing it and seeing multiple derailers. Um, so this is gonna be a full review of this drivetrain. I will probably eventually do a long-term durability test just to kind of get back to you guys on how it's doing, which I do think it's going to be several years before I can really give you guys an idea of how long this thing is going to last because I have been really impressed with the reliability so far. So first, you know, why did I pick this over a 1x12? As you guys know, I do have 1x12 drivetrains. I've had several of them. I've installed, uh, I've lost count at this point, uh, 1x12, um, especially Eagle drivetrains. We have installed a few Shimano's as well, but you know, done a lot of the 12-speed stuff. So why would we go for a 9-speed over a 12-speed? Because of course, this was a frame-up build and I had the option to do whatever I wanted. Um, one, of course, this one costs a lot less you're spending a lot less money, um, but there are some actual benefits uh, besides cost. So the big one for nine speed is one, you don't have to shift as much. So on the 12 speed, a lot of times you have, especially on a mountain bike, you have too many gears and you end up having to shift two or three times to get the range that you're after. And it's just a lot of shifting. It's less shifting than a two by, of course, but there's still a lot of shifting going on. And on a nine speed, there's less gears. The jumps are bigger on a road bike. Of course, that would definitely be considered a con, but on a mountain bike or even a bike packing bike, my experience on this one has been that it's really not too bad. I do notice that there is a difference between the two, but a lot of it is positive. I don't have to shift as much. Occasionally I do feel like the jump is a little too big, but it depends on the situation. Um, and it's a very mild thing that I noticed, especially Early on when I first put on the drivetrain, I noticed it a couple of times. And after that, I really haven't noticed it at all. So the next pro to running a 1x9 is just the design is going to be more reliable. So there's bigger jumps in between uh, cogs. There's actually more space in between the gears. And so, and the chain is wider as well. So um, one, the chain's a little bit stronger just by design. The 12 speeds are getting really good. You know, you don't see weird failures on theirs on those versus, you know, versus other drivetrains. But nine speed chain is, is pretty wide. It's actually almost as wide as an eight speed chain. So it's wider than a 10 speed and everything above it. And so it's pretty strong. The other nice thing, and this is probably more noticeable, is that on your 12 speed, it doesn't take a whole lot of damage or a whole lot of a bad manufacturing or just manufacturing errors to make those drivetrains not work. So you bend a derailleur cage a little bit, you bend your hanger just slightly, and all of a sudden you can't shift, um, skipping all over the cassette. It causes a lot of problems um, just with a little bit of damage. Nine speed, because it has more space, can take more damage before it starts to cause major problems. And so you just have a lot of wiggle room. You also have wiggle room in your adjustments. So that Cable tension does not have to be perfect for the derailleur to work properly. So as someone who works on bikes every day, I don't really want to work on my own bikes very often. It's fun to tinker, but you know, little problems, little extra things I don't really want to deal with when I've been uh, doing the same thing all day long. You know, I just want to be able to ride my bike. And for a lot of you guys that are maybe not super experienced mechanics, this is going to be an easier drivetrain for you to maintain than the 12 speed, especially if you're in the bike packing realm, you're out by yourself, you have limited tools, um, simpler is gonna be better. So that's the nine speed versus 12 speed kind of spiel. How have I felt about the actual drivetrain? So MicroShift, of course, you don't hear a lot about them because they don't do hardly any marketing and that keeps their price down. So um, price has been a huge plus really really happy with the cost of these the chains themselves for replacements are cheaper the cassettes are a lot cheaper um, you can grab different brands of cassettes because we're on a standard free hub body so you grab shimano sunrace um, even sram uh, if you need to and 
you're going to have more options. So in the pandemic, we've definitely seen everything go out of stock, Microsoft included, SRAM included. Um, sometimes what's been funny is the really, really high end stuff has been easier to get, but that is never even a guarantee. So with the nine speed, you're not always going to be able to get exactly what you want at a bike shop, but you do have more options from what you can choose from on the one by nine. So on the derailleur, we have a clutch nine speed derailleur. So that's not something you're getting from SRAM or Shimano, um, in this speed, uh, in, in the nine speed here. So really strong clutch actually as well. I've been really pleased. I don't have any protection on this chain stay. Um, I should get some, but it's very rare that I ever hear this chain hit right here. It's obviously possible, but you know, it's a pretty rare occurrence because that clutch is pretty strong. Um, all metal construction on this derailleur and this derailleur cage is really burly. So extremely, extremely tough. Not only can it take more abuse before it starts to shift poorly, but the derailleur itself, because of the way they've built it, is gonna stand up to more abuse as well. Uh, a lot of steel parts on this one. The Advent X, so the 10 speed version, does go for more aluminum parts to bring the weight back down. Um, but the nine speed doesn't really have to worry about that. It's missing three cogs compared to the Eagle. And so has a lot of wiggle room to make the drivetrain more durable. On the cassette, you can definitely get wider range nine speed cassettes. Microsoft opted for an 11 to 42, which is exactly what we were using on the high end stuff for 11 speed when one by first became popular. So 11 to 42 is kind of the bare minimum, uh, just basics. You can it's not um, inadequate, but sometimes it'd be nice to have more. My experience, the way I've got this set up, I don't need any more than the 11 to 42. So rather than grab a wider range nine speed, I stuck with their stock option. I am running a 28 tooth chain ring. So that's how I can do that. Depending on where you live, you may want to pick and choose. If you go for a wider range, you're going to have bigger jumps um, in, in addition to what is already here. So that's going to be a choice you're going to have to make, but they do make that Advent X 10 speed um, for those that are going to need that. That's also a great drivetrain. On the shifter, this is the original Advent shifter. They do make a new kind of pro version that's a slightly different design. It's got more padding on it. It just feels a little bit more premium. What I like about this one is even this shifter has a bearing in it. Um, the, the feel is really tactile. It's a very positive feeling shift. It doesn't feel um, vague or, or buttery. It just feels very crisp um, and very consistent every time. So really, really consistent shifting. Personally, I like that kind of really um, firm mechanical feel. Some may not, but I, I definitely prefer it over, the, over a lighter action feeling, uh, but still very easy to use. It's not hard to push or anything like that. The thumb, push here and then you have a pull on the on the upshift. I have gotten used to that. I feel like it's very comfortable. On a Eagle, you've got a push push action and on the newer Microshift shifters, um, both of those are gonna be thumb pushes. And that just gives them a little bit more room for um, brake clearance and stuff like that. So I haven't had a problem with this one. I do like it, but that newer kind of pro shifter and the one that is on the Advent X is excellent as well. So just keep that in mind. This one's got a bearing in it and this uh, GX Eagle actually doesn't, it's a bushing. So the shifting feel is different on these two. On Shimano, you have the option of pushing and pulling this lever here. So, you know, Microshift, depending on what shifter you grab is kind of doing both worlds. So you have, you have some options there. So I have been really pleased with this. I have not had any issues in terms of reliability. I do recommend watching their set, setup video because the B-screw um, is a little bit different than on a typical derailleur. So when you attach the derailleur, there is an extra step that you need to take. As long as you put the derailleur on correctly though, um, it's really easy to set up and it hasn't given me any issues. I feel like it's gonna last for a very long time. And I haven't felt that about a drivetrain in a while. <laughs> You're always kind of worried about breaking something. I don't really worry about this one. It just works and it's really reassuring. So would I get this over a GX Eagle or a Shimano 12 speed? Well, obviously I did pick this over uh, you know, a 12 speed drivetrain, 
and partly because of cost. Well, if the cost was exactly the same um, and that wasn't a problem, would I still pick it? I think now I having ridden it, I think I would at, for sure I would pick it over SX or NX Eagle. Um, it's a major upgrade from those two. Between GX and this, um, it's really a toss up. I really do like having the really big range on the fuel and just that extra climbing gear is really nice, but it would be really hard. I think I would have no problem running this drivetrain on that bike and I wouldn't feel like it was a major downgrade. Um, between that drivetrain and an Advent X 10 speed, you know, if I'm grabbing the two drivetrains, I love SRAM, but I really, really would be tempted um, to put the Advent X on. It would be a hard sell to put the, the 12 speed on there. So yeah, like them both for sure, but really been impressed with this and you're not going to break the bank on it. You're going to get a really good, you're going to get really good reliability, really great performance. And I, yeah, I have no problem recommending it. Just watch their setup video uh, or have someone else set it up for you and get off to the races or whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> it's up for whatever. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Sorry this video got a little bit long, but um, yeah, we'll catch you next time.